Well, welcome to the Sean Trey Show. I have a really awesome guest with me today. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell people who you are and what you do? Yes. Hello, everybody. Happy what day is it? Thursday. Um, Thursday. My name is Corbin Hunter. Um, I'm originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota, but I reside now in Los Angeles, California. Been here for the past eight years or so. Um, nice. Moved out here to be a professional dancer, and that is what I do. And I love what I do. I've been dancing since I was two years old. So it's my passion. And I can gracefully and humbly say I've been able to achieve a lot of success this far in my career. And I'm just so happy to be here today with Sean and talking to all you guys. And it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good one. I love that. Now, you kind of touched on what was going to be one of my, my next questions. Like, how did you get into dance? How did you get into this? I mean, was this the type of thing? You said you were dancing since two. Was this like something that you you knew from an early age this is what you wanted to do? Or was this just something you started exploring early on? How, how did that all pan out? Yeah. So my mother, actually, she was a dancer. And I really? think she's like, okay, well, I have three daughters. Well, my youngest daughter came after me, obviously. But I have two daughters and, mm-hmm. you know... They look so cute in a tutu. So let me go ahead and put them in dance and they need to get some energy out. So I think that's kind of how it started. Um, I don't think I actually like fell in love with dance until probably like I was like seven, six, eight around that age range. So, mm, okay. Yeah. No, so you started into dance classes. Did you do formal training? Were you studying jazz, ballet? What did you start into? So I actually... Um, was put into a competition dance studio, Stage Door, for performing arts, um, based out of Coon Rapids, Minnesota. I don't think they're no longer open now, but um, I was training in everything, ballet, tap, nice. jazz, you know, hip-hop. That was mostly where I started. Um, and then as I got older, I started to broaden my um, styles that I learned. Um, I went to a performing arts high school. So for them, I, I got to do salsa, you know, like different styles of hip hop, nice. West African, um, just kind of everything. I wanted to know it all, modern, all styles of modern. So, yeah, you could, you could definitely say I'm a well-rounded <laughs> uh, dancer. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That, now, what, when did you like feel like the bug bit you you know you were just like when did it become like this was something that you knew was your thing it yeah Yeah. um probably when i was 16 Mm -hmm. um i auditioned for a job in minnesota and it was to dance for willow smith and yeah so i was what a junior sophomore in high school i believe yeah maybe sophomore sophomore in high school going into my junior year. Um, and I got to, I performed with her and I got to meet Beyonce backstage because she was, um, also performing. And I just was like, ah, this is what I want to (laughs) do. And from 16 on, I was like, all right, game plan. Let's go. How are we going to get to LA? And that was when I kind of knew for Corbin that, this was my be all, uh, you know, LA was the goal. And, um, yeah, I can, that's probably, I could pinpoint when I said yes to following this dream of professional dance. You just, you just tapped on something that I love. (laughs) You just tapped on something that I love. And that, that comes up as a common theme in Mm. in my podcast with people that are talking about inspiration and their journey. Say yes. Say yes. Yeah. And it's something that a lot of people don't think about the power of that simple statement, because we, we so often go through life. It's really interesting. And I, I try to come at this with no judgment, Mm -hmm. but when, when we'll talk uh, to people on my podcast, one of the things that I notice is that there is in a ton of people, sometimes people will have self, not ton of people, but a lot of people will have this self-limiting speech. You know, that's awesome, but I could never achieve that. That's Mm -hmm. great. But I don't think I can get there. And sometimes you got to say yes, because to, to just the opportunity, to, to life. And, and again, no judgment. Find what makes you happy. Find where you're content. Find your path and your journey. But you got to figure out ways to say yes. When, when did you start? Like, when did that concept really jump into your mind? You know? 
Uh, honestly, at a very young age, um, I've that. always been, <laughs> I've always been a I I said no to things very young that Corbin didn't want to do. But when Corbin wanted to exactly. do something, he said yes, like all the time. Corbin, you want to do this dance convention? Yep, sign me up. Like as children. You don't have fear. Most kids don't have fear, right? That kind of comes into yeah. us as we get older. Um, I was, nobody could stop me. I wanted to do it all. I wanted to be seen. I That's loved, nice. when I was younger, I loved being the center of attention. Like, I just knew that this was something that I could do. I knew I was good at it. And I wanted to explore every opportunity, you know, like I just wanted to learn, 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 have opportunities to show what it is that I knew I was good at. And, you know, <clears throat> I always saw myself not being the the smart child. And I just talked about this, you know, um, this past week at this seminar I was at, but I knew, okay, Corbin's not the smart child, but she's the dancer. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to run with it. So the wheels fall off. So, yeah, I said yes. I said yes to the endless opportunities. I said yes to being vulnerable, putting myself out there. You know, I I just, I knew that this was something that I loved to do and I was good at it. So why not give myself a shot? What's the worst that could happen, right? I don't get the job. I, they say no. I don't get the yeah, scholarship. Right. I, right. you know, I, um, yeah, I was, I was more fearless back then when I was a child. Um, so at a very young age, oh yeah, I That's was awesome. saying yes to almost everything <laughs> that involved dance. That's awesome. It, you pointed out one thing too, that like, it's this last year because of, of COVID, um, yeah. I, we had to homeschool. Mm. And so my daughter is, she's uh, five. Okay. And I, 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 when I was younger, earlier in my career, I taught, taught children English when I lived in Asia, uh, early wow. when I first moved to Asia. And I, I, I like teaching. It's great. Yeah. And so naturally when everything went online and everyone's like, well, what are we going to do with, you know, education for the next year plus? And right. I was like, well, I, I, and I dove into it. And one of the things too, is like, I noticed that there was a natural aptitude for my daughter for certain things. Mm. You know what I mean? Like she's just like her mama. She loves singing. She loves dancing. She loves the arts, you yeah. know? And like tonight we were, we were, we were recording a song. And so part of her homeschool today was to come into the recording studio and sing with mommy and daddy. And, and mm -hmm. I was teaching her how to lay down a track, but it was interesting because she's not great at math. She's not great at, at it, it takes her time to learn. She's very smart, but it's taking her time to learn to read. Yeah. And and she's like, my cousin's smarter than me. And you made this comment, I wasn't the smart girl, but you seem really smart to me and really quick. And and, and and so I was just like, I think that our, sometimes our, sta our, 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 our metrics are wrong because we're not, we're not putting people into the situations or the, the, the opportunities for success that they need to be put in because, you know, you were being put into that. Luckily your mom had the the wherewithal to know dance is the place to be you know and just helping you develop that yep. because yep. we don't always get that in the regular school systems you know mm -hmm. now now did you have good mentors when you were coming up that helped you kind of develop on your path or were you seeking out the knowledge yourself yeah i have been blessed to have some of the best mentors kind of ever um that's awesome I think, you know, in my field of um, competition world, like, you know, I just had dance teachers and um, that was great. But someone who I called mentors, mm -hmm. I probably got when I was around 16 in Minnesota. I was a part of a um, <clears throat> professional um, ballet um, and hip hop company for th two years, two, three years, two years. I don't know. I think, I think maybe two years. Um, and they, um, by the name of uh, Ricky Palomino and Stacey Bodecker, two people who really uh, help polish me as a dancer 
Um, mm. And then when I transitioned to California, I've met some amazing people who have also helped me get to my success in my career. Um, I was a part of a scholarship program in L.A., um, the Debbie Reynolds Scholarship Program, which unfortunately is no longer around. Neither is Debbie. Right. But um, and I found some amazing mentors and then educators who really helped um, fine tune the little things that I needed to go to where I wanted to be and Mm -hmm. um, truly have been blessed. You know, people saw me, I used to in LA, you know, it's expensive, right? So I was very young out here working multiple jobs, serving, bartending, trying to make sure I could still pay my bills. And um, in the area I lived in, um, was a lot of, you know, artistic people, directors, choreographers, musicians, right? They were all coming into this, you know, this area I used to work. And they'd be like, okay, well, what, what do you do? You want you want to be a dancer? Okay, great. You've got the look. Here is this. Like, I always had people who were willing to just help me out of the goodness of their heart because they knew, like, okay, I see this lady. She's from Minnesota. She's so sweet. Oh, Minnesota, nice. I was always so sweet, you know. Oh, she's so sweet and she's beautiful. She's pretty. Oh, I want to help her. Like, genuinely, I had people who just wanted to help me. Um, and I am very, very blessed that I was able to have people like that in my life because um, every single person who has touched me in any sort of way has helped me get to where I am today, for sure. Yeah. There was a, there was a statement that uh, a gentleman that came on the other day he said he was, there were a certain few people that just believed in him. Yeah. And I think that's so important for us that, the, that these people who, because you use that, a word that I really love, the idea of being polished. And, and you know, when, if you ever see a, a, a gemstone that mm-hmm. is unrefined, mm-hmm. they look rough. And yet there is a person yeah. who sees it and perceives it and goes, this right here, this can be beautiful but it needs polish. It needs refinement. And and I think that that's such a a powerful thing too, because in any of the creative arts, you know, we can get to a certain point, but then we need help and we need help to get to that next level. So it's really awesome. Now, when you came to LA, um, how did you go about finding the work that you were going to dive into? What was it that did that you, how did you, how did you begin to grow your network in Los Angeles? Yeah. Um, so usually I'm trying to think back. It's been almost nine years since I've been here. Um, the first thing, you know, I, I tried to do was get an agent <clears throat> and I had met a few great people who were able to, um, kind of, you know, put a good word out there for me. Um, cause I knew I could dance. I just need a little help. So, um, I got an agent and from there, all right, well, that was step one, you know, now I just need to get on some auditions and just get in there and get into the field of what it feels like to be around these professionals and people Mm -hmm. who've been working, who I have been following, you know? Um, so I just started meeting a lot of people, taking a lot of classes. And, um, one thing, you know, I talk about to especially kids today or people who are inspiring to be a professional dancer. One thing that I didn't do, I wish I did sooner was that, um, I wish I would have been very specific about who it is that I wanted to work for, how, who works for them, you know, what classes do they teach and so forth. Right. So my dream job was Beyonce. So I didn't know who her choreographer was. I didn't know who the assistant choreographer, I didn't know these things. So I talk about now, like just doing your due diligence, right? See who it is. Cause unfortunately this world is all about who you know, right? It's all about who you know. So networking and meeting the right types of people. Like I didn't, I didn't understand that. You know, I didn't understand the game when I was 18 years old. I just wanted to dance. So, you know, I was just out here trying to meet people, take a bunch of classes and, um, uh, yeah, I just, you know, audition after audition, after audition, after audition, I mean, so many auditions later, you know, and, um, finally five years later, I was able to, you know, get that one audition that I was hoping for. And, you know, then my career kind of took off. That's awesome. And that's the thing. Um, 
there was a somewhat, I can't remember the way they said it. Uh, overnight successes are actually like, people don't realize that there is this mountain of work that went into an overnight success, Absolutely. you know? And so yep. people are like, wow, this person just suddenly appeared on the scene. No, they've been honing their craft for years, mm -hmm. you know, and we just happen to see what happens now, you know, what pans out. And it, you also touched on, on being smart about your process. When I started, when I, even now, as I'm building out my podcast, mm -hmm. you know, how do I go about, people ask me, how do I go about finding uh, people? And there's a couple ways. One is hashtags are great on Instagram. I, I just go through hashtags and I find hashtags that are inspiring to me. You know, yeah. like one day I'll, I'll go, eh, you know, amazing guitarist or something. And I'll go and find amazing guitarist, you know, um, professional dancers on different hashtags. And, and then I just kind of go through and what I see, but I also am smart about what I do too. I follow agencies, yeah. you know? And so, yeah. you know, I see CAA, UTA, Gersh, you know, Abrams artist, and it just seemed not trying to like, I'm not trying to chase people who are all verified or things like that, but I'm paying attention to who are young creative people that these people are talking about. Because yeah. like, you know, it, it's like we have creatives everywhere yeah. and it's just about where can you find inspiration yeah. and can you be smart about it? Right. Because like you said, if you want to know work with Beyonce, well then, do research about who Beyonce's people are and such, you know? And, and so for me, I would like to have this kind of, I'm, I'm wanting this to kind of become like a, I don't know. I don't know what my genre is. It's not Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> far away from that. Yeah. Oprah's amazing. Yeah. It, it's like, you know, and I, definitely it's not a late night thing. It's more of like a, I feel like I'm a grown up Mr. Rogers meets like Oprah or something. Oh my <laughs> God, I love that. Right. And so, but I mean, you have to kind of also know what you want to pull off or where you want to be going sure. with it. And once you know that the sky's the limit, but you have to know that too. You have to know what you want to reach out towards and what you want to achieve, you know? You have to, otherwise you're just like, all right, well, I hope I book something. You know, the world yeah. doesn't work like that. If you want to book something, you may book for the Teletubbies. Is that really what you yeah, exactly. want to do? You know, like, <laughs> exactly, my point. I, yeah, it's, it's so crazy. Like literally the words that we say, and I preach this all the time, you know, are so pop words in general are so hundred percent, right? 100%. Whatever you say you can do or can't do, or they both can happen. hundred percent. Right? So it's like 100%. be specific with what it is that you want, what it is that you don't yep. want, because you can have both. You really can't. Yep. You know, manifestation. I preach it. I live by I'm it. With you. I spoke. I will dance for Beyonce. It was written on my walls. It was written on my mirror. Like it was something that I knew. Okay, this is happening. Um. Yeah. So just so if I could tell anyone who's watching right now, you know, um, you want something, goals, anything like that. Get very specific. With what it is that you want, right? Because the more specific you are. The more detailed you can be, the more exact yep. you'll have what it is that you're looking for. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's the thing you have to, what was it? The, the Marianne Williamson quote, um, mm -hmm. our greatest fear is not that we are, oh, what, how's that go? It's like, that we're not that we're inadequate, that we are powerful beyond measure or something like that. It, it, it's like, oh, we, we think that we don't have power, but the reality is, and this is the thing that I, I see, and I wish people understood. Yeah. We have this idea that the person who gets into the field and the person that has achieved and is successful, there is this huge gap between them. But the reality is, is that you can be here like that. It, it just is a, a combination of luck knowing the right people and just being open for sure for sure to life <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and that's what's scary too is a lot of people are so um afraid right of the unknown that it's yeah. holding them back from an even better even greater opportunity um right. because literally i had quit 
I was so not happy at my, one of the jobs I worked at um, as a server and a bartender. I was very unhappy there. I was like, oh, why am I here? I'm missing out on jobs. I can't take class. I have to work. And um, one day I was like, I've had enough. I was like, I put in my two week notice and I literally booked Coachella like a month after that. So it was just like, you really never know what's waiting for you. You just have to get rid of something first in order to bring in something better. So, yeah, no, and and my teacher, my energy teacher would talk about create and destroy, but you have to be willing to destroy stuff to create stuff. Because if you got stuff occupying that space, there's no room. There's no room in your life. I love that. Create to to get rid of stuff. Destroy to create. That's good. Destroy to create. Yeah. like that. Now, who are some of the, 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 the dancers that inspire you or the people that inspire you most? Where do you go for inspiration, I could say? Um, as far as dance-wise... Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be. Where do you go for inspiration? Yeah. I guess would be the bigger. So currently, where I get um, a huge part of my encouragement is God. I got very spiritual this past year. You know, I was going through a a kind of a very hard and dark place um, in 2021. And um, I, you know, I felt like my cup was just empty. I had nothing to refill my cup. Um, You know, and as a dancer, we're always giving, 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 having to be happy, be on set. And I love what I do. And I was just like, I don't have anything to give. And so um, God recently, you know, I've been uh, I'm still like haven't gone in person to church, but I do a lot of online um, uh, sermons with my, you know, my pastor and um, my mentor who I'm working with currently, my life coach. She's been helping me a lot. Her name is Tia Rivera. I give a lot to that woman. She's changed my life. Um, And other, you know, motivational speakers, Lisa Nichols, um, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of other people who I've been listening to, to just inspire me, motivate me, um, you know, help change my mindset. I go to a personal growth seminar. It's called Psy Seminars. Um, awesome. and they have, I just started my, uh, progress or transition with them this year as well. Just starting to just really realize who I am as a person, how I want to show up in the world. And, you know, yeah. being that I was not in a very good place, I really wanted to work on who is Corbin outside of a backup dancer, outside of being a businesswoman or entrepreneur, like who is she, how is she being you know, seen in the world, what's her purpose. And so I've really been finding inspiration from things like that these days, a lot of books, um, because this world, nice. this industry is draining. It really is yeah. the people. Um, and, and, you know, I personally needed that. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who can probably, you know, um, relate to, to feeling like right. that, but <laughs> there are a few. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that was one of the things that I, um, I'm with you. I had some dark times when I was in, I had some health challenges Mm. in around 2012 and there were days where it was tough. Yeah. And my dad gave me it. My dad's an extremely religious, spiritual person. And I always respect him for that. And he gave me a book that was really special. And the the main theme of the book was just enough light for today. Mm that I have just enough light for the step I'm on. Mm. And then that you, you have to find, sometimes we don't have all the answers. Yeah. Sometimes life is tough. Life leaves us feeling uncertain and drained. But if you can find that, that truth, whatever that truth is for you, and you hold on to it, and you, you, and you search for it, and you yep. find it. And like, because, you know, my dad is, he's what? He is 76 right now. He still works. Wow. He still runs. He runs a massage school. And and he has no plans of retiring because for him, this was his second career. He trained a massage 10 years ago and then became a massage teacher. And now he's on, he's on the state board for massage in the state he lives in. 
And why does he love to do it? Because his whole life has been a life of service Mm -hmm. and how he looks at life is that if he's not helping people and he's not giving back in some way, it it doesn't make sense. And to me, I just respect my dad so much for that. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, now what, what are some of the, what are some of the, um, what do you feel some of your mission is? If you don't mind me asking. No, not at all. So right now I'm in a place where my mission, I I have a few, right? Um, Industry wise. And then outside of that um, is to enrich, empower and educate as many people as I can in my industry. Now, as far as that, this is where, you know, I take a step outside of what it is that I do as a dancer and um, now start to educate people on how to be able to uh, retire with some money in their account. Because (laughs) a lot of people in my industry and I'm putting myself in this, you know, we're not really financially educated and being young, making, you know, five to six figures, you're like, oh my God, I have all this money. Let me go and buy this. I didn't have this. Let me go buy a new apartment. Let me go buy a new car. Let me buy these shoes. You just are spending, spending, spending. And I, you know, one of my very first tour and I I saved enough, but not enough. And, you know, within a few months I I had nothing. And it's like, wow. Okay. How can I now start educating people, especially the young you know, entertainers coming to California, how to protect themselves in this industry um, and now be able to educate themselves on how to properly be 40 and be okay financially because they didn't spend all their money in their 20s and their 30s. Yeah. Um, that's one of my missions now because I was there before, you know, and I no longer felt like, I, I felt like, you know, my resume, which is pretty nice and my bank mm-hmm. account, they did not match. And I said, okay, what is going on here? <laughs> you know, and the pandemic really woke me up. So wh- my, that's one of my missions is to really now um, help educate, enrich and empower, you know, people, dancers, but also just everybody, you know, in the world yeah. um, about financial literacy, because that's something that I didn't grow up learning, especially in my community. We are not taught financial literacy. We are up. not. Instead of we're learning, you know, craziness, I, I just right. And, and I, that's I a hundred percent agree. Like, if you can't teach people how to invest in basic things yep. and to put, why are you teaching them calculus? Yep. Why are you teaching them, you know, trigonometry? Because I'm sorry, those are important, but I think it's way more important to teach them how to not be broke and, yes. and you know and, yes. and and not beyond broke like massively in debt you know yes. and to yes. whatever i uh, I'm preaching to the choir here yeah so one of my missions and then secondly i um really love to just give back to where i'm from you know i never forget I that i'm that. from minnesota so i enjoy going home to teach i enjoy going back to you know teach kids especially the you know the young girls who look like me um, growing up in a place where, you know, I saw mostly white girls, you know, I struggled a lot. I had a lot of identity and body self-conscious um, psychological problems growing up. And I know I I wasn't the only one. I'm sure I'm still not the only one. I'm sure there are young girls, brown, beautiful little girls who are going through what I went through. Um, but not just, you know, black girls or black children, but just all kids and people, anyone who was looking to go my route. Um, Minnesota, we don't really have, uh, you know, like anything that prepares students for LA. And I feel like it's my duty to go. LA is a whole new game. I thought I was ready. I was thrown to the wolves. Right. So if I can do anything to, you know, um, prepare these kids and students and just, you know, I went, I came from a performing arts high school. So like I have so many, you know, ideas and things I want to do, but I just want to be 
a beacon or something to show these kids what is possible, you know, as far, as long as you believe in yourself. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I have some things in the works, but I just, um, really love giving back. So I want to start to do more so of that in my hometown. I love that. I had this epiphany this week that I want to, I want to, I want to throw at you because you seem, you seem savvy to a similar concept. I had this aha moment this week about, or around, around, around finances, around money stuff, yeah, around yeah. the idea of brand, a branding, because what I was struck by is that how often people will get hired as a position, mm -hmm. like this person gets hired as a teacher. Mm -hmm. This person gets hired as a, as a dancer. This person gets hired as an actor. Instead of hired as Corbin or hired as Sean, because the truth is, is the much more powerful position is to build up your own personal brand. Right. And the, once you get to that point of like your brand has that power, you can start to, to ask for whatever you want to ask. And I, I noticed the difference with that with my wife, because mm. my wife doesn't get she doesn't get booked as a singer. She gets booked as Fung V. She gets booked as the first winner of Vietnam Idol. She gets booked, booked as these the things that are part of her brand. And she she can ask for more. She knows her value. And, and it's interesting because, you know, when you you kind of referenced yourself and it seems also that you have this very strong understanding of your self-identity, which awesome. <laughs> Thank you. It took a long time to get here. Let me tell you that. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm 42 and I just realized that. And I wish someone had taught me that when I was 15, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I've been doing a lot of work on who is she, who is Corbin, you know, because like you said, the identity thing, I think, um, a lot of people get attached to whatever job it is that they're doing, but no, who are you yes. alone? Who are you by yourself? Yes. What is your brand? Right. So, um, and I honestly got, I have to give it to my mentor who has been really polishing me now in this day and age into, you know, the woman awesome. who I am. Um, but thank you. I, I received that. I wanted to, to ask you this now. If you could go back in time and give advice to your younger self, what advice would you give yourself? Ah. And we're not talking change in the past. Yeah, we're not yeah. talking, you know, like back to the future type stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would tell little old Corbin um, to Never ask for permission to be great. Oh, <laughs> and brush that one off right there. That was that was nice. Never yeah. ask for permission to be great. Now, now, unpack that for me. Why? Because um, I feel like younger people, younger kids, they don't. I just, I'm going to speak to myself. I don't remember when I was younger ever feeling like, you know, okay, I have to hold back because of X, Y, and Z. No, I was fearless. And I just, this is my own opinion. I just feel like children are fearless. And yeah. as you get older, you know, the experiences we go through, just freaking life, this industry, coming in contact with shitty people. Sorry, but you know, like you're... No. Oh. It's true. You're, we get these walls that come up and then it's like, dang, you know, like, can I do, can I, what? Yes, you can. We've allowed, I've allowed, um, this industry, certain types of people to hold me back because I felt shy or I felt like I was making people uncomfortable. And, you know, I, I wish I could tell my former self to never let that happen. Never have let it happen, but it did. I'm back. But um, I would tell her that because you don't ever have to ask someone to be great. And if somebody else feels uncomfortable by what it is that you bring to the table, that is something that they have to work through. It is not yourself, yes. right? You are not, yes. you didn't do anything to make these people feel any type of way. They have their own insecurities that are being brought up to make you feel like you've done something wrong, make you feel like you need to pull back to make you feel like 
you know, you did, you know, something wrong. No, it is something that they have to deal with, not you. Step into your greatness and don't ask for permission. Yeah. And if any of those people are blocking your path, find a new path. Find, <laughs> yep. You know, because you just, our, tomorrow is not promised. Our life is, I mean, death is, is the real thing. It, it happens. And we don't know when it's coming, but it's something that's inevitable. It's something that we, no one can, you know, get around. So why would you settle less on a day-to-day basis because of somebody else's insecurity? I'm not doing it anymore. And I hope yeah. anyone listening, if you are doing it, stop it, right? Because you owe it to yourself to be the best version of yourself, to show up every day, you know, giving what it is that you are meant to give. And um, I could preach all day about that, but that's where I no, I'm, <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I was, I was sitting here tonight with my daughter. Yeah. And um, I had written this song for her Aww. and her mom. And so I, I had her sitting down and I had to give my wife a demo so my wife could learn the song so that we can record it next yeah. week. And my daughter looked at me. She's like, Daddy, can I please sing with you? Mm-hmm. Set the microphone up for me. And I was like, and I was in a hurry for a second. I was like, let, let me just, I was like, I stopped myself and I said, all right, let me do this part. And then you can sing with me here. Mm-hmm. And so on the chorus, which was much simpler, and she's five. She's a little girl. Yeah. And so, and I just sat there and I, I worked, I, I, I sat with her and I, I helped her get through her, the process. And then she did a good job. It, it's her second time, yeah. you know, kind of singing on a song for, with her mommy and I. Yeah. And she looked at me and she got quiet and she's like, I get shy when I sing sometimes in front of people. And I looked at her and I said, that's okay, but you still tried and I'm proud of you. And I think in those moments, it's like we we have to be so ready to 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 be to be strong and to be courageous because there are some shitty people, like you said. We we had we had um during the pandemic we had this beautiful tree that grew up on the front outside of our house. Mm-hmm. We have a crack between mine and my neighbor's house, a tiny little crack. And this tree emerged mm. and it wasn't just any tree. It was a Bodhi tree, which I don't know, I don't which know. is like the, the Bodhi tree is the sacred tree of Buddhism. It's the tree that the Buddha sat underneath. It grew up over him and created shade, wow. say uh, shade while he meditated and found enlightenment. Wow. And so the fact that we had this like really iconic, yeah, you know, yeah. th- it grew out of nothing. The crack between the houses was like this. Wow. How a seed got in there, no one, right. no idea, Crazy. but it grew up there. And we just were like, this is a beautiful sign. We were so blessed by this. Yesterday, we came home and found that the stem of the tree had just been cut in half. Our neighbor, who's a very not nice person. He had been tearing branches off for a week and we, we, we trained it over to our side. It wasn't anywhere near his house. The only branches that were left on, he cut it. And my wife and everyone, they went over and yelled at him and he's like, well, I'm sorry. I guess I should have talked to you. And it was just a very cowardly thing to do. It was a very weak thing to do. And in that moment, we had a couple of choices. Allow this to bring us down. Allow this to defeat us or do something that was beautiful. So I immediately ran downstairs with a knife, not to, not to attack. The yeah. I, like, <laughs> I, I, I took some cuttings off the tree. And so I cut off as many different branches as I could. And I went and put them in water and I'm now growing the tree. It's still alive. Mm. So those branches, you know, I'm going to grow into multiple new trees yeah. because even though a negative thing happened, I'm going to use it to plant more seeds. Yeah. So it was yeah. one tree. Now it's going to become five. Absolutely. And you know, it, and so we can't let those negative things get us down. We have to step up and step through into our greatness, Absolutely. you know? So yes, I love, it. love that. Now, if you had Aladdin's lamp, what would you wish for? <sighs> Because we're talking manifestation here. Yeah. What would you wish for? Um, that's a good question. If I had Aladdin's lamp, 
I would wish for man. I get one wish <laughs> or three wishes. <laughs> I'll give you three wishes okay. if you want. I would wish for wisdom and knowledge. Um, I would wish for probably a cure for breast cancer. I've lost a lot of amazing women to that. And, um, I would wish for, hmm, probably, huh? third one um maybe i'd say this is a good question <laughs> um probably just Mm, my last wish. Um, I want everyone to be happy in the world. I like that. So happiness around the world, cure for breast cancer, and what was the first one I said? Wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom. Yep. I like that. I think the world would be a better place if people had more wisdom and knowledge and happiness. God knows uh, breast cancer has touched my family. So I definitely am, am understanding on that. Mm -hmm. one. Now, where do you, where do you see yourself going in the next year or two? What do you want to really work on? What projects would you like to dive into? So, um, it's very, very, very in early stages. Um, but I see myself having my own nonprofit organization um, I like in the that. next year or two, um, I see myself, um, definitely still in the entertainment industry, but maybe in a different light as far as, um, uh, more so maybe acting. Um, mm. I love stage. I love being on stage. Um, but maybe it's a different stage, right? I, like um, I trained as an actor, so I say go yeah, for it. Yeah, and I've done a little bit of work. I do like comedy sketches and things like that. So I have nice. a natural, I guess, like ability to do so. I just got to now like take it seriously and, and really start um, working on, you know, the, my acting skills. Um, I see myself... <laughs> the next year or two have impacted over, I'd say, um, you know, maybe like 2,500 to 5,000 people's lives as far as educating them financially. Um, that's awesome. I'll be a wife. I'm getting married next year. <laughs> um, and probably maybe a mommy. I don't know. Um, yeah. and just stepping into, really Corbin entrepreneur side, you know, I've always, I've, I've only seen myself as a professional dancer and I'm really starting to see, you know, my whole, you know, not asking for permission to be great. I took that on myself. You know, I don't have to ask or yeah. wait for permission from anybody to try something new, to step into this new light, to um, become this new woman, to have new ideas, to have a new purpose. So that's kind of where I am, a potential um, book author. I'm in the process like of writing that. a book. Um, yeah, that's kind of where, my, where I'll be at in the next year or two. So. Sounds like your, your vision is building an empire, and I think that's awesome. Yeah. 
It sure is. That's you got to. one thing I'm realizing, you know, um, I had a conversation with my father who is almost 60 and I'm like, dad, you know, what do you want to, you know, what do you want to leave behind? And I don't think he ever thought about this. Right. I'm like, you know, mm. one thing that I, I hear a lot is that, you know, you die twice, right? You die when you get put into the ground. And then the last time that your, your last name is ever said, right? So my last name is Hunter. We'll be Johnson soon, but Hunter nonetheless. And it's like, okay, so, you know, dad, like, what do you want to leave behind when you go? And he was like, dang, <laughs> you know, like you're right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, me and my father are actually in business together and we, um, are working on the the whole financial literacy side because even though he's 60 he's never it's not even too late for him to right. get his life together and live out his last few days how he wants to and share it with his family and kids and grandkids and whoever else you know uh, that's a, yep. a whole different long story but um hopefully i, I answered your question i come on a little bit of a tangent sorry <laughs> but, yeah. um, Tangents are the best tan thing. I love tangents. <laughs> yes. They take us into wonderful new territory. Yeah. So, so no, that was building great. an empire, like you said, it, it's something that I am doing, um, mm -hmm. and I'm very strongly passionate about because you're gonna know who Corbin Hunter is to the day I'm in the ground, and that's a fact. Uh -huh.